So within the context of physical protection, first of all, perimeter protection. These are components that stop an attacker, stop an ethical hacker before he gets anywhere near the asset. These protection mechanisms, there's millions and millions and millions of them. There's all kinds out there. I've listed a few examples, things like fences and gates, which will help stop an attacker from getting to an asset in the first place. Door locks, man traps, those are all things that stop an attacker. The one that's a little bit less obvious is something about lighting. A lot of folks don't realize that lights are actually a really, really effective perimeter protection. Why? Because as an attacker, I do not want to be detected. Remember that an attacker never wants to get caught. Covering my tracks is a key component of ethical hacking. Detection is certainly a lot easier for whoever's defending the network or the asset if it's lit. Lights are the enemy of, of any type of perimeter attack. And things like roaming security, uh, guards, and dogs. So these are interesting protection mechanisms at the perimeter. They're not so much the depth piece, which I'll get into in just a few slides, but you'll see here that these stop fairly effectively someone from getting into a network or getting in, getting onto um, an asset. And then finally, common sense. So perimeter protection a lot of times is defended by just people using their brain, planting plants that might be sharp or pointy or harmful in places where an attacker might want to be, you know, just basically using common sense to defend against this type of attack. When a physical compromise has taken place or is taking place, the detection and recording elements are quite important to the defender. Identifying the attack and the attacker, what's been compromised, is important for them because they can remediate against it. If they don't know who attacked or if they don't understand what assets were attacked, they have an almost impossible time defending. And certainly if they don't know that a physical asset was compromised, if they don't know that a server was stolen or a laptop was broken into or a hard drive was removed for days or weeks or months or even ever, they'll never actually be able to defend against that type of attack. That's an extremely successful ethical hack if they never find out about a physical compromise. And there's a lot of controls that a defender can use in the perimeter detection and recording area, like video cameras, video recorders, things like that are, are pretty straightforward and obvious. Motion sensing lights, again, I mentioned lights a few moments ago. Motion sensing lights are another enemy because not only are they lights, which are the enemy of this kind of attack, but they turn on when an attacker is near. That's actually quite frightening if you've ever had that experience before. Something to stay away from as an ethical hacker. And detection a lot of times is about entry and exit logs and certainly recording who is in a place at a given time when an, when an access card is used or when some type of proximity card or biometric is used. That kind of perimeter detection and recording is, is critical for the defender because that's how they know where people were, when they were there, and who could have actually compromised the system. And then, really, the biggest flaw in perimeter defense, I think, is failure to monitor systems, failure to actually watch when an alarm goes off, or failure to respond to an alert, failure of the security system or the security framework to do something like check on the attempted use of an, of an unauthorized or deactivated proximity card. That's an extremely important flaw to follow up on. If you, as an ethical hacker, for example, find a card, find an access card, attempt to use it, it fails, you leave, but then you notice that no one ever shows up to look for whoever was trying to use it or, or that card doesn't get flagged, something like that. That's an extremely important signal that the security is not being followed up on in any meaningful way. And we can potentially build on that as an attack a little bit later on because we know administration and security are not being taken very seriously. Disrepair is the other big one that I see here in a perimeter flaw. Gates that don't quite lock shut or a fence that needs mending or a light that would be in a great place if the bulb was actually still working, but it's not anymore. Well, that kind of disrepair opens holes in a physical security perimeter, 
but it also does so in a way where the defenders don't think that there is a hole. If they know that the perimeter is really, really well lit, for example, but you find that there's a bulb that's out that's been out for a little while, great. They think that that area is well lit. Therefore, they're not really worried about extra defense at night. And that's an opportunity for us to actually get through the perimeter. So looking for perimeter flaws, looking for vulnerabilities is something that an ethical hacker should do certainly right off. And if you recall in the video around footprinting, I talked a little bit about doing reconnaissance by looking at Google Maps or looking at other types of, of online uh, representations of physical locations. This kind of thing is really common to see even in that. You might actually see aerial photographs of the perimeter of whatever you're looking at for your ethical hacking approach and find, oh, look, there's a gate over here that doesn't ever seem to be staffed or is in disrepair. And I'll take a look at that in person, see if I can actually make a compromise there and then move on.